What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel. Today on The Hard Count, Vegas put out national title odds already for 2023. Where does the Big 12 fall? Welcome into CFB with JD, the people's channel for every single thing college football that happens on YouTube. It happens here nearly every single day. Would encourage you to subscribe. Armstrong Sims, Jack McKenzie, they do the heavy lifting and y'all drive the show. So here's the deal. The other night, Georgia, Alabama, the pageantry, the adrenaline, the romance of college football all got mixed together in one big game for the national championship. Obviously, Georgia won. Confetti falls. The Bulldogs are your champs. And then some people in Las Vegas, minutes after the game finishes, put out some odds. So us here being you know a college football-centric show, we don't discriminate about what piece of college football that we uh, tend to. Needless to say, the odds and the potential money-making opportunities fall under that umbrella that we're interested in. So we just took a little gander and said, okay, the SEC seems to have a pretty good hold outside of Clemson, their kryptonite, on the national championship. But Vegas, they don't discriminate either. What Big 12 odds are there out there? Meaning, what teams within the Big 12 conference have a chance, and how much of a chance does Vegas give them to win the national title? So we took a, we took a gander there were four teams, according to my calculations from our stats and research info department, that are within a 50 to 1 range of winning the national titles. So we're just going to go down the list here, and we're going to talk about, okay, how likely is it and what has to happen for these teams to play for a national title, let alone win a national title. So let's start with the formula. The Big 12 Conference it has proven year in and year out, if you have one loss and you win the deal, you're in the playoff. Obviously, that wasn't the case this year with Baylor being a two-loss team. But if Oklahoma had run the table and had one loss and gotten in and won the won the uh, conference, I should say, they would have been in the dance. Oklahoma State, if they get in the end zone on fourth and goal, there they play for the college football playoff as well. So that's the first thing: win the conference and do it with one loss or obviously go undefeated. That's even better. The second piece we've seen from other teams that have played for national titles. Got to have an elite defense. Even more so, you got to be elite in the trenches. Clemson has elite in the trenches, obviously, and that's what they had when they were beating Alabama and playing for national titles. Most notably, Georgia. I mean, you look at that front seven, especially what they have in the interior of that defensive line, it was second to none. So being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these violent rushing attacks from the SEC, that's that's paramount. That's imperative to be able to play for a national title and be able to win a national title. You got to have something in the trenches. To the same token, you got to have some good team speed. Both those teams, Alabama and Georgia, that was one of the verbs that's, or the adjectives that was thrown around the entirety of the week leading up to the game. Hey, both these defenses are extremely fast. Guys on the outside, on offense, extremely fast. So team speed, uh, something in the trenches, and be able to, to win your conference, obviously, and have a one-loss co uh, conference champion. Also have a special offensive player. Don't have to have a special quarterback, a special offensive player. And Georgia proved that the other night. Stetson Bennett is a walk-on. Walk-on turned Juco, turned scholarship guy. He's not Joe Burrow. He's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not Bryce Young, but he got the job done. Now, in my humble opinion, the special player on offense for Georgia was Brock Bowers. God bless him. He's only a freshman. Was at prom this time last year. But he was the difference maker for Georgia multiple times throughout the year, and then obviously in the championship game, getting that touchdown to seal the deal was crucial. So a special offensive player is a key ingredient, and then also an elite head coach. Kirby Smart, needless to say, Nick Saban, the best to ever do it. Whoever ends up coaching in that game year in and year out is elite. Okay, so that's kind of the ingredients you need to play for national titles. So we're going to go down the list here of what Vegas thinks. Vegas gives the Oklahoma Sooners a 15-1 to 1 chance to win the national title. Now, what's encouraging, they're kind of following the Georgia blueprint. They hired a first-time head coach who was a former national champion defensive coordinator, Brent Venables. Look at Georgia, Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator for Alabama when they won a few titles. They're following that blueprint. I think there's something to that. The special player for them that I think it will hinge on is Dylan Gabriel. 
Obviously, the UCF transfer committed to UCLA. They little switcheroo when Caleb Williams decided he was going to leave Oklahoma. I think he's a special player you need, especially what Jeff Levy likes to do offensively. You need Dylan Gabriel to be that special ingredient for you. Will he remains to be seen, but I think he's someone you got to look at, obviously being the quarterback, but even more so with all the toys that I think they'll have around him, whether it be the transfer portal or guys stepping up. He's a guy that you got to look at really closely to be able to kind of carry the weight for this team. Now, defensively, New defensive coordinator, replace a little bit on the defensive line. Will they be able to have the team speed and just the beef inside to go toe-to-toe with teams they would need to beat to win a national title? I don't know. That's why I have the question marks here. But you got to be encouraged by the fact that you have a guy like Brett Venables now running the show. What does that mean? That means they'll take on his persona. You watch those Brett Venables defenses, they don't play around. They play smash mouth. And the recruiter that he is, he will eventually get those guys on campus. So will it happen this year? I don't know. They have the best odds in the Big 12, but a team to keep an eye on for the reasons I just mentioned. Next, Oklahoma State at 40 to 1. They're a tie with another school. We'll get here to a second. With uh, the second best odds in the Big 12 to have a chance to win a national title. I've got my list of question marks with Oklahoma State. I wouldn't have put them this high. I wouldn't have given them these odds, needless to say. Uh, because I just have, like I said, a lot of insecurities about them, one of which being Spencer Sanders. Can he take the next step in this offense? He actually outperformed my expectations this year, but there were so many instances where I felt like they won in spite of Spencer Sanders rather than because of Spencer Sanders. That's not to say they couldn't have somebody else on that offense step up. Maybe they get... Uh, their running game continuing to go at the pace it did this last year. The defense continues to play well. I just didn't see enough dominance from Oklahoma State. There were a lot of games where Oklahoma State very easily could have lost and been a three-loss team. Like Oklahoma State has that kind of roster right now to where they could easily lose three games. Now, their culture, and I think their coaching of Mike Gundy allowed them to be a one-loss team, ultimately a two-loss team, I guess, when you look at the Big 12. Uh, but but I still have my reservations about them. Also, the defense was their calling card last year. Their defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, see ya. I'm gone to Columbus, Cornell alum. Uh, he's not there anymore. How will they rebuild this defense? Because it's been proven time and time and again, you need an elite defense to play for a national title. You need elite defense, honestly, to be able to win the conference right now. We'll see about them. But again, they're 40 to 1 odds. We have our own question marks. The team that I mentioned before that's tied with them at 40 to 1 odds is the University of Texas at Austin. Now, I have an asterisk next to them because, like I said, got to have one loss and you got to win the conference. Texas plays Alabama next year. Now, if they win, that would be amazing. There are no absolutes in college football. But let's just say for the sake of this conversation, they lose to Alabama That means they have to finish the rest of their season undefeated to even make the playoff. We'll see. Maybe Quinn Ewers is all that, that he's cracked up to be. Maybe he is the savior of this program. Maybe Sark figures it out. But I have my reservations, obviously. I guess that's why they're 40 to 1 odds. My biggest question for them, can Sarkeesian flip this program in quick enough time? It's been proven multiple times through multiple games, especially when they lost to Kansas, that there are issues internally at Texas. We knew that. There has to be a cleansing. That has taken place. That is taking place right now. A cleansing takes time. There's a reason why showers take about five to 10 minutes. You don't get in the shower 30 seconds, you're out. That's not how you get clean. You you gotta scrub a little bit. You gotta put the shampoo, the conditioner. I mean, if if you're feeling like you're really gotta be preppy, you use a loofah. It takes time to clean things. Texas needs a cleaning. So 40 to 1 odds feels pretty generous to me, but we'll see what happens with them. It's going to be a revamp project. Now, how quickly can they do that depends on their success in the transfer portal. Quinn Ewers, by a lot of people's estimation, is a big get. I'm not denying that. I have my own reservations about him. But Texas, like I said, it's going to be a rebuilding process. Got to get squeaky clean. We'll see how long that shower takes. The fourth best odds in the conference, we'll finish out with this team, is Baylor. Defending Big 12 champion Baylor at 50 to 1. I understand why they're 50 to 1. A lot of that probably lies on what they're losing on defense with Jalen Petrie and Terrell Bernard going pro, JT Woods. And they lost a lot on the offensive side in terms of the backfield, not on the offensive side of the football as a whole, but in the backfield and the skill receiver positions. 
Tyquan Thornton, no Moss. RJ Sneed, he's gone. Abram Smith, going pro. So a lot of pieces that contributed in a big way a season ago are no longer going to be there. If I'm a Baylor fan, I'm looking at this team and saying, well, okay, we lose some players that are, you know, pivotal and they're a bit, you know, they contributed a lot and there's no denying that. But look at what we got at quarterback. Two quarterbacks that I think have start a lot of places in the country. You bring back four of the five offensive linemen that put a hurt on some people and opened up some pretty big holes for Abram Smith. I would feel marginally disrespected by those odds, especially when you just won the conference a season ago. And I've said this in previous videos. The personnel is one thing, right? Like the personnel is crucial. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes, not the X's and the O's. What they don't talk about in that little nursery rhyme is the culture. And Dave Aranda, in really his first full year, put in a Big 12 title kind of culture that translated to a Big 12 title kind of effort. So I think Dave Aranda is legitimately one of the best coaches in college football, and other programs would probably agree with me based on uh, the kind of push it sounds like they made to get him away from Baylor. My money rides with Baylor to be the best out of this group, maybe you couple that with Oklahoma. There's a big question mark with Dylan Gabriel. I probably put them right up there with Oklahoma to win the conference and make the playoff. There's a lot of things building in, in Waco. A lot of things being built. A lot of things still coming to fruition. I wouldn't be so quick to put them at 50 to 1. I think those are bad odds, but if you're a Baylor fan and you're a betting person, throw a little money on the Bears. So there you have it. Oklahoma at 15 to 1. Oklahoma State at 40 to 1. Texas at 40 to 1 and Baylor at 50 to 1. Bottom line, whoever it is from the Big 12 Conference is going to have to do a lot to try and unseat the SEC as the reigning national champ. That's it for us here at The Hard Count. Subscribe to the channel to stay up with every single thing we're doing here. We want you along for the ride. We will keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time.